everybody. I shot a clip when we first got to the museum here of the outside of it and the gate and all that, me and Jennifer. And uh, I don't know what happened to it. Uh, maybe it just didn't record, you know, what happens to me sometimes. I don't pay close enough attention. But anyway, we're going to start this at the Railroad Workers Museum in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And if you're ever in that area, I suggest you go visit this museum because it's really cool. Uh, once I got uh, to looking at things, I wish I had shot more inside, but I didn't. But uh, anyway, yeah, if you're ever there, I highly recommend this museum. We are inside the museum. I'm not going to do a complete walkthrough because it's a really big museum. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. It's three stories and uh, part of the old shops. So yeah, we'll check it out if I see something interesting. I'll share it. All right, well, we're outside now. The inside was pretty cool. Uh, nothing worth weighing a video down with because it was big, it was a small museum that's different, but three floors and a lot of uh, interactive kind of things. It was cool, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, we're outside now, so let's uh, check some of the stuff out here out. Double stack by the museum. Now tuna pipe and steel. Pennsylvania tender and that is the uh, museum. The fourth floor is for uh, they just storage and administration it looks like. And then, uh, but it's a three-story museum in this cool old building. All right, we are going to go over and check out the uh, roundhouse. Cool uh, Penn State Railroad Transportation Engineering. A little signal bridge there. And this car, uh, there's no information on it. Unless there's some inside, but if you know what this was used to haul, let me know in the comments below. That's quite a car. All right, we are in the uh, working shop part of the roundhouse. This is a restoration project on a K4 type locomotive number 1361. You can see there the firebox and boiler tender back there. Then uh, see the uh, drivers sitting over there. But yeah, wish they were in here doing something, but Either they're off today or they're at lunch. But it smells like a shop. And an old fire truck. Alright, well we are <clears throat> the turntable here and the roundhouse. We this big pit it says uh oh, here. Right there. It says two thousand six with the Pennsylvania Railroad emblem, so I'm assuming this was rebuilt in 2006. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, looks like a 100-foot turntable or so. Maybe a little bigger than that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, some rolling stock out here. Nothing fancy. I'm assuming that is the Altoona Courthouse. There. Railroaders, my boy, yeah, it's just car built for the museum, painted up for the museum, I guess. I don't know if this is actually a car they used out on the line. Let me know in the comments below. Right, inside the roundhouse, the Berwyn White Coal Mining Company Car Service Department 040 switcher. 
in pretty bad shape. Uh, Pennsylvania. I guess this would be a sleeper car in the process of being restored. Okay, well, that's where the, these cars are. And uh, over on the other side of the restoration project, so to get a better shot of the drivers, and there's a little switch engine there, and then a little caboose. Don't know if it's being restored or if it's just sitting here. All right, we are at the Horseshoe Curve in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And uh, a little chilly today, about 47 degrees and breezy, but not bad. And uh, sounds like we uh, have one coming down. We've been here about, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. And uh, we were told they trains run about every 40 minutes so yeah i'd like to catch at least one coming down and at least one going up so here we go all right well this one is coming up rather than down i guess i get as in tehachapi sometimes it's hard to tell You've just heard the wheel squeal Excuse me. I don't know what the grade is here, but it looks to be about like to hash be right here, but at least 2%. I don't know what they haul in these cars. I'm sure some of you do. I don't know what that shack is over there, but there's a <laughs> There's a uh, sign in front of it, so maybe it tells the story. And again, I'm sure that some of you folks who are more familiar with this know what that was for. Well, maybe for, I don't know, train orders or something. I don't know. You know me. I love to speculate, even in Pennsylvania.
beautiful view looking uh, down towards uh, the actual town of Altoona, city of Altoona, pretty big city, is uh, down that way. So far our trip to Pennsylvania has been absolutely wonderful, and Jennifer down there. On the phone to somebody. But uh, yeah, the scenery here has just been just outstanding. Uh, our friend said that the colors aren't as vibrant as they usually are because of lack of rainfall this year. Thank you, it's nice to see you. Thank you. Oh, here comes another one coming down. Oh, it's a special of some sort. Private car or something, that's cool. Fox Southern. But uh, yeah, you can see center frame here where it comes around the curve and starts coming down the hill. You can see the grade there as it comes around. Got a little, I'll explain that in a second. Got an old GP9 sitting there. And then on down, on down the hill. It is quite a climb up here. They have an incline railroad that will bring you up here but it is out of service and that comes up and this is the top station and as you can see it is quite a climb coming up here it uh, about wore jennifer and i both out it's uh feels like it's getting a little colder it has started uh, to rain sprinkle it's not raining so jennifer has retreated to the car or the museum down there wherever she's gonna go but uh horseshoe curve i didn't know if i'd ever actually see this place all i've ever seen is pictures of it and read about it in history books but uh, it is so beautiful up here it's just absolutely absolutely gorgeous uh, in spite of the cold weather I am having a great time 
in Pennsylvania. And uh, I'm so glad we came. Uh, just get to see Tracy and Mike, if nothing else. Everything else has been icing on the cake. And uh, yeah, I'm getting sun. here comes the sun. And uh, got to see the world famous Horseshoe Curve. I uh, understand there's a lot of other railroad stuff down in Altoona to see. And I uh, look forward to seeing that. So uh, I'm going to stick around for another half hour or so, see if another train comes by. And uh, if not, we'll head down into town. So we'll see what happens next. All right was correct in my assumption that this would tell us what this was. Evidently, there were uh, pretty extensive uh, operations up here at one time. Tourists, they would stop tourist trains, people who wanted to get off and watch. Uh, there were two spurs that went off to mines, one on either side of the curve. And... Uh, I would assume back up in that canyon and back up in that canyon. And uh, the only building that is still standing is this one. And it was the watchman's shanty. And I don't know if he was just someone that watched over everything, made sure everything was okay. Or, but uh, still a cool building. Love the uh, for rock formations that they cut through up on Tehachapi. Yeah. That's all just granite up there. It's got its own it's got its own cool look too, but I really like the look of this. And again, absolutely gorgeous. This is a pretty cool map of all the railroads in this area. Um I don't know when this was made, it doesn't say but uh, it still has the Pennsylvania Railroad, Conrail uh, on here, has their lines. I don't know which of these lines all still exist other than the ones that built the canyon. And the one to the uh, left of us over here was the Glen White Coal and Lumber Company Railroad. And uh, it was abandoned in 1938. The one to the right of us up here, up that canyon, was the S.E. Baker Railroad, which later became a common carrier line known as the Catanning Run, Catanning Run Railroad, and it was abandoned in 1917. But yeah, it's got little snippets of uh, information about all the areas around here, different parts of the railroad, and uh, going to be uh, cool to go check some of this stuff out. Alright, got this coal train coming down the hill. It has stopped raining, that's nice. The wind kind of stopped blowing.
talking with these folks here. They are from, uh, I think they said they're from South Carolina. And this gentleman over here is from North Carolina. We were talking about how we just don't see many coal trains in California. Unless it's coal to go fire a, a specific plant like Monolith or Cal Portland or Trona. Not the only coal trains we see in our area. I'm sure these coal trains are in the same weight ballpark as uh oh <laughs> excuse me as the uh, grain trains that go through Tehachapi the grain trains tend to have more power on them going down the hill but that may be because I don't know maybe because of the curvature they want to run them a little slower I don't know if you do or if you know the, uh, you know, am I, am I right about the trains being in the same ballpark weight-wise? I'm sure they are. But yeah, if you know why they have a, a little less power here, please leave it in the comments below, because I sure don't know. Of course, they may have some on the end, too. And yes, Two on the rear. So yeah, it's comparable power. Going down the hill up there, they usually run like three and three with nothing on the back going down the hill and uh, sometimes four and three, but uh, so yeah. I would say these trains are comparable in weight. And I was just talking to one of these gentlemen here and talking about how long the train was and uh, said yeah I need my Stephen Humphrey where are you when I need you my friend from Britain because he uh, he's able to shoot photographs videos and count the cars on a train I am really glad that we didn't travel 2,500 miles, however far it was to get here, and not see any trains for you. That is uh, going to conclude my uh, adventure at the Horseshoe Curve. We're going to go down into Altoona, check out some stuff down there. I've heard there's some other cool places to uh, watch trains. We were down in Tyrone. That looked pretty cool. Maybe we'll do that later. There's a Harley shop in Duncanville, which is about, looks like 20 miles from here. So, hey, we'll go check out that too. All right, here we go. See what happens next. Well, came down here and went through the museum and getting ready to leave. And here come another uh, downhill. I, I don't know if this is a north-south or east-west railroad. But I think downhill, I think going this way. Hey, Union Pacific. But uh, I think trains going this way are, I guess it would be southbound or westbound, northbound or westbound. I don't know. If you do, let me know in the comments below. And I don't know Those cars are placarded, but certainly can't see it from this distance. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that's petroleum products or whatnot. Usually, if they're placarded in it, it does look like they're red, so that flammable end.
And these are, these DPUs are manned because the guy just tooted the horn at the crowd up there. This gal here is a teacher. Hope she can use my cards to help teach her kids about how the railroad works. All right. Okay, I'm really leaving. Hey everybody, uh, these Pennsylvania videos, I never knew if I was going to catch anything else that day, and in most cases I, I didn't uh, see anything, any more trains anyhow, in some cases nothing else interesting to shoot, so a lot of these videos just drop off at the end, and uh, I hate doing that, but in a case like this, you just never know what else you might run into, being unfamiliar with the area and whatnot. So anyway, that is what's going on with these videos just dropping off at the end. All right.